In our previous video, we had a wonderful time out in Nebraska visiting our friends at NatureWorks. We got to see how the polylactic acid harvested from corn is turned into PLA pellets. But now it's time to travel across the globe to visit an actual filament factory in China and see how those little pellets are transformed into spools of filament. All right, so in talking about filament production, we can see here that the raw material comes in after it's been pelletized in these large ripstop style containers. So this material here is the raw PLA and it will get mixed with other additives or colors to actually create the final spool. Let's go take a look at some of the color pellets and see what they look like. So we're here by some color pellets. What's interesting about when they actually produce the PLA is that most of the raw material will be a whitish or milky color, and then they'll mix it with these color pellets. Now these color pellets are also made out of PLA, but what's really cool is you really don't need much to take the raw white milky color to a brilliant red, let's say. This is very uh, concentrated right here. So here are the color pellets in the PLA form. You'll mix, um, again, a small amount of these uh, to whatever ratio that you're working with the white pellets, uh, and it will, again, produce that, that brilliant color. So it's really cool. You'll have way less of this color material um, than you would think uh, to produce the final product. So what we can see here is some of the material that's pre-mixed. You can see the milky white PLA, and you can see the color PLA. This is gonna result in a gray PLA. And again, you can see that there's not much of the color PLA needed to make that gray color. This hopper here goes via this tube up to this drying chamber. Temperature controlled drying chamber will make sure that the filament or that the PLA is the right humidity or the right dryness before it goes into the actual extruder. And you can kind of see through this preview window, the raw material and the little bit of color that's mixed in. And down here as well, you can see a sampling of it coming out. So here we see one of the mixers that takes the raw PLA and the color pellets and makes sure that the color pellets are evenly distributed throughout the raw PLA. This ensures color consistency as the PLA is extruded out of the extruder nozzle. Just like on your 3D printer, this machine also has an extruder nozzle. Right here, you can see the filament being pushed out and strung along through that nozzle before it enters some cooling bath. In this enclosure, there's a heated screw that basically takes the filament and continues to turn and pushes it through the actual nozzle over here. Now the nozzle is gonna create a filament that's slightly larger than what we actually want at 1.75 because as it cools down through the water baths, it will actually reduce in size a little bit and it will be tensioned as well. The way that it gets through this screw here is through heat. And in order to keep that heat consistent, there are six different stages of heat here that make sure that the screw is heated to the exact right temperature to produce the right diameter coming out. So as the filament comes out, it's still very hot and it needs to be cooled down, but you can't cool it too quickly. So what we have here are two different cooling baths that basically are a little bit warmer and then a little bit cooler. The other interesting thing that is as the filament comes out, it's not perfectly round yet. It's got sort of an oval shape, but as it's pulled along the path, along these wheels, it will eventually get to that correct diameter, that correct circle. Um, but again, these two baths allow the filament to cool down uh, over a longer period of time and with two different temperatures. So it's not a shock to the filament. So here, once the filament has gone through the two different baths for cooling, it comes to this laser sensor here, which measures the diameter of the filament. It wants to make sure that the filament is within spec, 1.75 plus or minus whatever that spec is. If it's not, it will send a signal to this mechanism here, which will either slow down or speed up the pool of the filament so that it gets to that spec and to that 1.75. So once the filament comes out of the diameter inspection area, it goes up to these sets of pulleys up above. These pulleys act as a sort of buffer. The filament gets strung over and under and over and under many, many times. And then this pulley over here can actually expand out to make the buffer longer. What that allows the end user to do down here is swap out the spool whenever he fills one up and then reload another spool. It's very important at this process when the filament is being wound onto the spool, that great care is taken. 
if it's not wound properly and the right tension is not kept, you may get little pinches from layer to layer of the spool. This factory works very hard to ensure that as the filament goes onto the spool, it is placed from left to right, back and forth appropriately, so that when you're using it in your 3D printer at home, it's coming off easily and allowing the spool to turn effortlessly. Here in the lab, there are a number of machines used to test the filament once it's produced. Everything from the smoothness of the filament once it's printed, to the color and the humidity. Alongside with things like tensile strength, it's important to test the filament to make sure it's responding to the environment as you expect it and it's printing as the customer expects it. Once the filament finally comes off the line and gets vacuum sealed, it comes over to this area here where it gets packaged before it comes out to you, the consumer, or before it makes its way to a micro center near you. Thank you so much for joining us on our second part of the short series. In our final video, we'll be looking at a number of other use cases beyond 3D printing for the wonder material that is PLA. Stay tuned.